powder heads under Section 1C of the new Canadian Constitution are defined as persons engaged in an activity in a winter recreation area that endangers the hearts, minds, and bodies of any adult in the immediate vicinity. Penalties to a maximum of $50 or one year in jail can be levied if the offense involves bad language, loose women, homemade alcohol, South American drugs, religion, loud music, or fast skiing in a restricted area. Any person fraternizing or associating with a suspected powder head in or around a designated ski resort is subject to life imprisonment. This includes those involved in the viewing of unauthorized movies featuring fast and or reckless skiing sequences. This warning is issued by the Right Honorable El Molilacotian LLAA, Minister of Roads, Mountains and Entertainment for the people of Canada. Please, we would like to start now. Mr. Anderson, watch out. Would you? Watch. Man. Okay, let's talk rope tone. Now, remember, what I said before, don't hold on too tight. Not too tight, Melvin. Do what the man said. I'm not going. I'm not going. Do you hear that? He won't go. I spend good money at this place for these lessons, and he won't go. Tell the man you're going, Melvin. Do it. Do it. No, I'm not going. All right. You go. Okay, let's see your stuff. Remember, let it run through your hands. Okay, hang on. That's a... All right. 
Okay. Mr. Anderson. Look, that boy can do it. Why can't you? Good money down the drain. Take it easy. Just relax here. Take it easy. Don't hang on too tight. Mr. Anderson. You don't have to use the tow rope, Melvin. Two grown men acting like dummies. Disgraceful. Disgraceful. Now what, hot shot? Time is money, you know. Isn't that right, Melvin? I'm gonna go up the hill. All right, that's it. Everybody take ten. You can do what you want. What about my lessons? I wanna go up the rope top. You tell him, Melvin. You tell him. Melvin. Story, my man. How is it? You uh, want a bite? Chop this hill is the pit. As soon yeah. as I get enough money together, I'm going to blow this hot dog store. Yeah, man. Something about teaching those beautiful people to ski is losing its punch. Thanks to Norman. I can just get him and his bloody schedules off my back. Look serious. Better go find Wanda. Linda, I know you're mad at me for the things I said to you this morning, but mad, I say things I don't really mean. Coming in, okay? No, it sure hurts me to see you tramping around all night with them no good ski bums. You're a grown woman now and you need your independence. Why don't you give me what's mine? Give me my inheritance and I'll stop bugging you. Well, now you know when you're, before your pa died, he left that money in trust until you become of age. And I have that money all wrapped up in the business. It's for your best. Bullshit. Now, you listen. I want you to stop going out with that no-count ski bum bus driver. And that's it. Oh, damn, there I go again. Look, honey. You take my credit cards and go out and buy yourself something real pretty. And I'll be upstairs all afternoon, and when you get back, you show me that what you bought, okay? problem with the bus won't be a minute. Mm -hmm. Happens all the time. Watch your steps, sir. Watch now. Be careful, man. Inside. Make yourself at home. That's right. Yes, sir. In. Oh, hi, Rosie. Hi. Uh, can I have a cup of black coffee, please? Hi, Tim. Hi, Ralphie. Jack? Yeah, it's Stryker. Yeah, yeah, I got them. They're here at Rosie's with me having coffee. Rosie's? What the hell are you doing at Rosie's? This is my fourth load of born agains in two weeks. And if it's not reborns, it's a school kids or police convention. Listen to me, you stupid jerk. No, no, call back. You're lucky to have the job in the first place. That load of reborns is going. No half-baked brother of mine is going to tell me how the hell to run a bus line. Send Duffy or something. 
Or you can come and get them yourself for all I care, because I've had it up to my asshole with what a friend we have in Jesus. So stick it where the sun don't shine, hunk. Uh. I did it. You don't believe it, but I did it. Rosie, um, that's for their coffees, and you better give them refills, because it's going to be a long, long wait. And, uh, give Ralphie here six beers on me. Oh, God, this feels so good! <laughs> Hey, Strike, wait a minute. Belinda, far out. You know, I really didn't think you were going to come. Did you get past your guard dog? He was waiting up for me. We had the worst argument. I told you you should have stayed in bed. By getting up at 6.30, you missed a wonderful alarm. Cut the wise card, Strike. So you're still serious about what you said last night? Serious, Belinda, you would have been proud of me. I just told Uncle Jack where he could stick his job. As of two minutes ago, I'm gone. <laughs> you want to come? The invitation's still open. Do I? All I want to do is get away from SD and this town. Hey, Stryker, I had the greatest idea this morning. Remember when you and I and Joey and Charles took off for the mountains? And all that skiing and partying and carrying on? Well, I know that Joey and Charles are getting pretty fed up with their jobs, too. Why don't we go down to the club, pick them up, and just take off? That's the best idea I've heard all winter. The four of us together again will be like old times. It won't bother you? You and me and Joey? Does it bother you? No, me, Belinda, old light and fluffy himself. <laughs> In this bus? Yeah, I've just arranged it with Uncle Jack. We're gonna have our own personal charter. Great! What are you two doing? What's the matter? Don't we have enough work to do around here? Look, you guys pay attention. Now, you know where you're supposed oh, to be Norman, right now? shut up! Now, you, hotshot, you've got two more classes coming in today, so what are you doing standing around talking to this idiot? As I was saying, those people are coming in today, and you're going to teach them. Hungry people, too, fatso. So get the lead out, both of you, or you're both fired. Got it? Eh? Yeah, got it? Oh, Norman, shut up. Wait, 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 Wanda, you can't fire those guys. Oh? Well, well, Joey's the only one who knows how to ski. And Mr. Chop. Yeah, well, he's a real kidney brain. Oh, he's an idiot. Oh, yeah, he's Just an idiot, like you, too. Norman, I could fire anybody I wanted to. No, you can't fire everybody. Oh, I could fire you, Norman. Hey, Linda and Stryker, what, what are they doing here? What? Maybe they came to go skiing, man. <laughs> Oh, sure, go and ski in. The beginner's slope or the more difficult pros only run? No, the beginner's slope. On the look. Ah, what are you guys doing here? Let's go. Chop! Oh, what? Joey! Chop! Chop! Joey! Joey! Chop! Chops! I've got a proposition to make to both of you. We got a proposition to make to both of you. What? We're gonna leave this Mickey Mouse hill and go and ski some real snow. What? It's easy, Joey. I've just borrowed a bus from Uncle Jack. We're going skiing. Wanna come? Do we want? All right. Let's go. Come on, get your what? stuff. Food. Let's go. Food. Food. Joey, leave that woman alone. Food. Food. Some sort of decision's been reached. Oh, why those two? Are you laughing at? <laughs> Shut up! Dumb kid, I told you not to stick your tongue on the pole. Uh, Why don't you ever listen to me? Thank you. Uh, aren't you? He's going to be late for his uh, dancing lesson.
Steve Buster speaking. Hello, lost and found. Philip Buster here. Your brother in law has dumped a load of reborns and gone skiing with a blasted bus. Guess who's gonna find him? Would you like me to look after the office while you're gone? Oh, no, you damn fool. You're going after Stryker. Will you describe the boss bus? Any identifying scars? Cut the police crap. It's the reborn bus. I want Stryker. I want them both. Now, Uncle? But I'm real busy looking for Mrs. Jones's suitcase. You know, the one she lost on the Florida bus? Damn it, filibuster. When I say now, I mean now. Got me hot? Oh. Right away, Uncle. Oh. Oh. I didn't see you, but you were speedy. Oh, is that your pretty car? And just who the hell are you? I've been hired to arrest that bus. That bus? Did you see my doe eyes blend on that bus? You mean the pretty girl sitting on Stryker's lap? Stryker? One of them goddamn ski bums, isn't he? Uh, I don't know. A ski bum? I want that boy. His hide's gonna be looking good on my trophy wall now. Come on, Sherlock. Excuse me, but my name is Buster. Philip Buster. Right, Sherlock, get in the car. Okay. You know, when I was skiing with the uh, Canadian national team, I used to ski those mountains all the time. We used to lay up there with a the helicopter and we just ski. We'd come down, ski down from that point up there. And we would have nothing but fresh powder and bright sunshine all day long. It was something.
people say, oh, those national ski team guys, they're a bunch of jokers. Hey, I tell you guys about that? Choppers, you're a magician as usual. Could you roll me a couple of numbers too, please, sir? Time for a revolution and a revelation, the mounted police. Come on, get rid of the dope, get rid of the dope, get rid of the booze. Oh. Joey, Joey, um, uh, take these and distribute them to the congregation, Joey. Hey, this is going to be a tight one. Come in. I'll keep it going as long as I can. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Belinda, Chops, get rid of the evidence. Come on, Chops, you got the biggest small the stomach. Mm. Let's hope we got a yokel on our hands, girls. Come on! Come on, quickly. That's it. Keep going. Quick. Peace, brother. A bust to heaven. Welcome aboard. Brothers, the Lord has sent us another to share in the glories of being reborn into his love. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Excuse me, sir. The Father. I was wondering, do you realize how fast you were traveling? Brothers and sisters. Good question. Do any of us here know how fast it takes to reach salvation? No, no brother. brother. Is it as fast as a speeding train? No, no brother. brother. Or a plane? No, no brother. brother. Or a rocket ship? No, no brother. brother. Is it as fast as this bus travels, brother? No, no brother. brother. How fast is it, brothers? How fast is it, brothers? I'll tell you how fast it is, brothers. It's as fast as it takes us to say, I love you, a Jesus. I love you, I love you Jesus. I love you, Jesus. That's how fast we were going, brother. As fast as it takes to love the Lord. Yes. Well, uh, thank, thank you for showing us the light, brother. Hallelujah, yes. brother. You're welcome. Thank you for stopping us from going astray. Amen. Yes. Amen. Well, um, I want you to kneel with us, brother, and praise the Lord. Yes, I'd like Kneel! To... Christian soldiers marching at the wall with the loss of Jesus going on, on before. Onward, Christian soldiers marching as to war. Hallelujah, brothers! Onward, Christian soldiers marching as to war. With the loss well, of I, I Jesus really must be going. going on before. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Onward, Christian Amen. soldiers marching as to war. With the love of Jesus. Come before. Hallelujah, brother. Onward, Christian soldiers marching as to war. With the love of Jesus going on before. Hallelujah! Bible thumpers. You frightened me. <laughs> it was the only open place I could find. What am I doing with this? All right, you cowboys, let's get going. We got rid of the posse. You want some of this? We'll have some more. Woo! <laughs>
there's the ski shop. We might as well go in and rent our skis tonight so you can get off on the slopes tomorrow as soon as possible. We're going to rent skis? Well, unless you want to pop them out of a magic hat or something, Linda. Why don't we uh, buy ski equipment? Buy ski equipment? I have SD's cards. You've got SD's credit cards? <laughs> so all you have to do is sign SD's name. I do it all the time. You mean you've got them here with you? <laughs> yeah. All his credit cards? Every last one of them. Hola, hola, hola. <laughs> You hear that? Chops, all we've got to do is just sign. Just sign. Get Joey. <laughs> Joey? 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 We're going shopping. Hey, Chop, that's great. Huh? Yeah, why don't you buy it? Uh, okay. <laughs> Forget it, Joey. It's obvious a $7,200 sale doesn't mean anything here. Take it. I take it, then, that you accept the gold version of this car. Just take it. Thanks. And that'll be for the clothes, of course, and the equipment. And, <laughs> naturally, the lovely, lovely mannequins. <laughs> you know, you've really been swell. on the slopes. Oh, man, Mama. Oh. I'm alive and well, and I'm going skiing. Oh, 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 I day. think just there. perhaps we've hit a soft spot. Watch out, oh, my pants are getting soaked. The bear went over the mountain. The bear went over the mountain. The bear went over the mountain to see what he could see. Oh, 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 Buster here, Chief. We're doing fine. Who is we? Oh, me and my partner, S.D. Esty, would you mind paying for the gas? I'm just checking in Come with on. the chief. Boy, we're burning daylight here. Give me a minute. Now, don't panic, chief. Everything is fine. What do you mean everything's fine? That lazy ass is one of our best customers. Striker? Yeah. Oh, Esty. How about that? What? What I want is that bus bag. And you had better get it back fast if you want a job. Or I'll hire a real professional. How would you like a promotion, Philip? Oh, you bet I would, Unc. Good. Get the bus back. And don't upset SD. Oh, I'm right on the job, Chief. Oh, don't you worry. Jesus, gosh, you stuff. Get out of here. What about my dime? Shove the dime up your ass. What? The well, has got my credit card. And the last time she did that, I had to sell an oil well. God, it's nice out oh, here. Oh, it is nice. Geez, you know it's nicer. That SD is not here to supervise me. You think you had it bad. Right about now, I'd be having some awful blue plate special with those vacant face reborns. God, you look good. Are you sure you want to go skiing with Joey, or wouldn't you rather stay here and tango with me? Listen, Joey's a great skier. You're not getting up tight, are you? Straight? Nah, not me. But if you're gonna go downhill with Joe, I'm gonna go find some uphill stuff at the chalet. <laughs> That's where the goyles are. I think I'll pretend I'm Frankie Avalon doing ski party bingo. Oh, yeah, well, uh, have a good time, eh? <laughs> me too. What the hell am I supposed to do with this stuff, man? You just put it on, chops. It's all you need. It'll keep you nice and warm. Oh, yeah?
I stood up. Now the bone is sticking right out, eh? The pain was so intense that I collapsed. And I fell right on top of a broken piece of ski that someone hadn't picked up that belonged to Peterson from his crash. That hit me right in the shoulder, dislocated my shoulder. Well, I passed out. Sprained wrist, broken leg, dislocated shoulder. Next thing I know, I'm looking up and Phil Marr. You know who Phil is? He's the American downhill champ, good friend of mine. 
So Phil's looking down at me and he says, Shit, man. When I told you to give me a break on the slopes today, I didn't mean for you to take me so literal. <laughs> but the last laugh was on him. Half an hour later, he cracked up in exactly the same spot as the rest of us. Four of us in one day. Can you believe it? Phil, me, Pete Peterson, and that uh, Austrian guy, Ingemar. Well, <laughs> when Kenny Reed came into the hospital ward the next day and saw the four of us stretched out in a row there, he said, you guys look like a bunch of lame penguins. <laughs> well, that's how we got the name the Penguin Ski Club. Of course, uh, only the best can join, and only people that have broken at least one bone. Oh, my leg is tired. Oh, my God. Don't panic. It's not. It's just that. Um. Ah. Uh, Excuse me. Just. God, it's them. It's us, Dan. Let's go. I don't know what I'm. I gotta go. <laughs> it's really been nice talking to you, girls. Alfreda saying, you know what I mean. But uh, 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 my agent uh, is calling. And uh, see ya. <laughs> How the hell are you gonna get off this thing? Oh, don't, just use your legs. Left, right, left, right. Oh, you idiot. There's lights and lights right in front of up here. Well, who did I know? I've only been up a chair. What's the stupidest goddamn answer I've ever heard in my life? Oh. Oh, that dumb answer. Here it is, you asshole. But they did it. Jesus, what are you doing on the hill? You better stick to armchair skiing. You're gonna break a leg doing oh, that. Yeah? If I had stayed up on top, I would have broken more than a leg. Philip Buster and Uncle S.D. are falling all over each other on top. They're getting too close for comfort. You mean S.D. followed me here? Yeah, I guess that's what he did. I guess he wants his credit cards back, and Philip Buster's up there acting like Columbo again. I can't believe they followed us. Look, I can't believe it either, but we're gonna have to cut our holiday short. You guys get back to the bus. Where's Mr. Chops? We left him in front of the lodge, remember? God damn it, boy. You said they're up here. Now, where the hell are they? Will you please calm down? They're up here someplace. Give me no damn glasses. Will you please? Charles! Mm. I've been looking all over for you. What are you still doing here? Mm. We gotta get going. Mm. We gotta lay low for a while. Uh, now, Belinda's uncle and uh, my brother-in-law are here in Jasper. They're upstairs uh, oh, asking questions. Let's go. Oh, man, I can't move, man. My legs are asleep. Come on, Chops, why do you do these things to me? Come on, Chops. All right, well, let's go. Fall down, Chops. Well, what do you see? I see that damn bus, you idiot. See, I told you they were up here. No, we're up here. They're down there. Do tonight, Striker. Go bowling or order a pizza and watch the Brady Bunch on TV. All right. Calm down, everybody. Calm down. So we're not in the hills, but we're out of the woods. We had to dump filibuster and SD. Lay low for a while, right? Yeah. 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 Well, I've been thinking for the last three days, and I've come up with a plan. Look, if we're borrowing our vacations via Uncle Jack and Hestie. Anyhow, why not go all the way? I mean, we'll never get a chance to do this again, right? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So what's the plan? Well, listen, a couple of years ago, I split and went down south. Ended up spending some time in a small town in Idaho. Now, if we're gonna ski first class, why not ski the classiest? You're not talking about Sun Valley. The world famous Sun Valley. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well? 
I bet she can uh, use our credit cards there. Yeah. You bet. But anyone who's anybody goes to Sun Valley. And Joey, you won't have to worry about having your skiing interrupted at all. We can go whining and painting and dancing and prancing. Ooh, ooh. Over the head with the If that car of yours had a gas gauge that was worth a shit, we wouldn't be here now. You hear? You stop insulting me. And that car is not a shoebox. It happens to be in mint condition. Shut up and suck. Oh, man. 12-year-old malt whiskey? You're disgusting. Piece of junk. Hey, this thing really works. All right. this door. I'm telling you one more time. Open that damn door or I'll blast the thing off. Or he's yeah. coming too. What are we gonna do? I don't know, Joe. All I know is we gotta get him far enough away from his car so we can dump him and he can't report us. Hey, hold up. Where are you taking me to? Is this bus moving? Stop this bus in the name of the law. Okay, you guys. I got you dead to rights. Speeding. Assault and abduction of an officer of the law. That's so funny, miss. Say, how old are you? Look pretty young to me. Bet I got you guys on illegal transport of a mine across the state line, too. All right, stop this bus. Turn it around right now. You're all under arrest. I said stop this bus. Hold on, officer. Before you act too hasty. There's a method to our madness, so to speak. 
You see, we're not who we seem. To your eyes, it may appear that we're just a speeding bus with a soldier for God sign on the side. But just think about it for a while, officer. A reborn Christian bus speeding through Idaho after bedtime with only four people on board? It doesn't make sense, does it, officer? And the reason it doesn't make sense, officer, is because we're not soldiers for God. We're soldiers for the CIA. Undercover domestic agents out of Callis, Maine. I'm working on an international plot to undermine democracy itself. Come on, who are you trying to kid? CIA? I wasn't born yesterday. Just bear with us and everything will be clear. Agent Joseph, tell the man why we were driving so fast. Ten four Agent Stryker. You see, officer, we are responsible for breaking up a religious cult that has blackmailed thousands of innocent people into signing over all they own, including their life, to this cult. At midnight tonight, there is to be a ceremony that will make the Jonestown Massacre look like the Rose Bowl Parade. At 12 on the dot, 1,111 people will commit Harry Carey for the insane leader of this cult. That, officer, is why we are speeding. Now ask yourself, do you intend to sit by and let all this happen tonight, or will you join us in doing this invaluable service for your country? So if you are CIA agents, let's see your ID. No, 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 <laughs> no, wait a minute. I mean, if, if we're on a secret mission, which this is, right, and, and, and we're CIA agents, which we are, then we wouldn't be carrying ID, right? I mean, uh, what if we were caught by the enemy? The FBI. Think about that. Yeah, and we, and we checked it all out with the chief. No problem. You know, uh, well, what's his name? Uh, you mean Chief Spears? <laughs> Not his last name. We know his last name. Well, what's his first name? Well, Melvin. Melvin, Melvin Spears. Spears. Right. You know Mel? Do we, Do we know, know Mel? Mel? Listen, we talked to good old Mel on the phone last night, and he gave us clearance to go right through the state full speed. Full speed. Because he knows how important it was that we get to Moscow. Moscow? Idaho. Idaho. Moscow, Idaho. Right. Okay, so maybe our CIA agents. What about her? She don't look like no agent to me. Of course she's not an agent. Does she look like an agent? Does she act like one? The reason she's acting so crazy is because she's just been snatched from the jaws of insanity by us. She was hypnotized into joining this cult in Montreal, Canada. And after her abduction, her parents tipped us off and we ended up finding her and re-abducting her. Now we're de-hypnotizing her so that we can take her back to mom and dad. First, we need your help, officer. <coughs> you do? Yeah. During the struggle to get her back, one of our agents was killed. And we'd be mighty proud if you would join us. We need your vacuous mind and your strong arm. My God. I've always wanted to be an undercover agent. Right. Agent Joey, swear him in. Absolutely, goddamn lootly. They say you wouldn't happen to have any more of that pop, would you? Hey. Give me a C. C? Give me an I. I. Give me an A. A. What do you got? C I A. Say it again. C I A. C-I-A. What's he got? C-I-A. Again? C-I-A. Oh, officer. I mean, agent. Don't you think you better take your uh, uniform off? Don't forget, you're undercover now. You better stop the bus, man. You better stop the bus. Isn't that uh, your brother-in-law's car back there? Hmm? Yeah, you're right, it is. Uh-huh. Hell. What am I going to do?
gonna do now, man? What are we gonna do now? Hold on now, let me think, Chuck. Let me think. Yes, great. They're probably on their way back to Edmonton, right, Stryker? Probably giving up by now, maybe. So eh? what am I supposed to be, Joey? The friggin' prophet of the bus? Come on. Stryker. down, boys. Everything's under control. Oh, yeah. It's all in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> First you lose them, now you lose us. You've got a brain about that big. Lee Belinda has got more smarts than you. And God knows she's scatterbrain enough. And then I had the stupidity to team up with you. And that 45 mile an hour shoebox pile of junk that you call a car. It's not a pile of junk. And that pile of junk, as you call it, will take us anywhere we want to go, any time we want to go. Now, will you cut with the nasty comments and let me eat in peace? Mm. You idiot. It's your fault they took Melinda away from me. It'll be on your head if they never find her again. On your head. But you bring your neck. There's, there's no need to panic. Everything is under control. Mm. Agent, mm. Agent, mm. Agent, wake up. Wake up. Mm. Wait, wait, wait. Agent, go on. Mm. Mm. And you see that? That automobile over there belongs to the leader of the religious cult we're gonna after. Yeah, I see it. And now, you can use Alice here as a cover, and we're gonna go and reconnoit the situation. Yes. Got it? We secret agents work together, right? Alice and me are a team. Right. Which way was that car, Gabe? Bet you that bus is within a hundred miles of here. Hello, man. Don't forget your oath, man. Don't yeah. forget your oath. oath. I got it. What? Say it. See. See. I. A. Man, not lost. See. I can see. Now, will you leave me alone and let me read the map? Your uncle, the bus company, and that guy called Stryker. You're all ready for the Squirrel Ranch. You're going to need a traffic cop to find your parking space. I'll have you know, well, my uncle said I was doing just fine. He said I was being real professional. How come I got to pay for everything? It's lucky, I guess. There you go, ma'am. Section 4420 of the state code under part five, littering in a public access. This your car? I gave the ticket to your wife. You better button up, buddy. It's gonna be cold out here tonight. Sign you are approaching Dubois, Idaho. <laughs> Look at that beautiful mountain. And we are going to be in Sun Valley tonight and we're going dancing.
How are you doing? You two know each other, man? Oh, yeah, Pierre. I'd like you to meet my stylish friend, Mr. Chops. Hi. Hi, Pierre. This lovely young thing is Mary. <laughs> Chops, when I finally left my delightful lady, demure and socially ambitious, about two years ago, mm -hmm. I ended up sleeping on Pierre's living room floor for a while here in Sun Valley, Pierre. <laughs> I remember those old days. <laughs> that was the time you gave me <clears throat> uh, ten bucks every drink. That's how I got those diamonds out. <laughs> this time I feel I own you one. Can I buy you a drink? Oh, I think we'll have three penguinies, please, Pierre. The penguinies coming up. Sorry, Mary. Man, I didn't know you were married. No? Oh, yeah, Mr. Say, it's one of my dark secrets. How in the hell do you think I ended up with an idiot like Philip Buster, her brother and I, anyhow? <laughs> Wishful thinking. Hey, man, did you see that, man? Did you see that? That is a her, Mr. Jobs. Yeah, I know that. I mean, but isn't she beautiful? Yes, I suppose so. But she's not my type. Listen, why don't you go and talk to her if she attracts you so much? Come on. No, oh, come on, man. Are you kidding? Girls like her don't go for guys like me. I mean, she goes for the, the macho, hairy-chested type, you know what I mean? Oh, come on, man, don't do that. <laughs> maybe I could, uh, maybe I could, uh, Buy you another drink. Indeed. May I join you? Oh, well, yeah. Or well, I could, uh, I could come over there. You know. Uh... <laughs> Did I tell you that one time I was ranked higher than Kenny Reed? <laughs> I know Pete Peterson. I know Andy Mack, and Andy Mack is my personal best friend, as a matter of fact, Mary. Hey, uh, Mac. Why don't I just uh, keep it down a little bit? Don't you worry about me, Everine. When you've had as much to drink as I have, you can keep anything down. <laughs> no, listen. I'm Andy Mackin, and you're full of bullshit. I never met you before in my life, and I don't like the way you're talking about my friends and pretending to be a skier or their friend. It's not important that my name is Jean Gnostini, but after a hard day on the that hole, like you would think you can ski, make me one of you. Help! 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 And me, and my club could beat you and your amateur friends on any hill, any day. Somebody ought to. Hey, come on, you guys, take it easy. Come on, cool it. Look, there's no reason to get upset. Yeah, he's a little drunk. He wasn't insulting you. Insult? What do you call an insult? It was a challenge. Come on, don't you know a challenge when you hear one? I do like to break his nose. Come on, come on. He's a pompous asshole, Joey. Let go of him, Joey. Look, you wouldn't want all these people watching to think you're afraid of this man's talents by beating him up with brute force. He's goddamn right it was a challenge. I'm challenging him to stop Stop being, being so hesitant. I... Uh, look. It's obvious what the answer is. A race. Hmm. Right, Striker? What are you talking about? A ski race. Great. Uh, the Penguin Ski Club challenges you. Listen, uh, we amateurs don't even look at waxing a ski for less than $5,000. Smart guy. You're on, man. I race. Uh, well, we're a little short of cash right now. Oh, yeah? What about our bus? We'll bet our team bus gets your $5,000. Huh? Okay. Sure, I've always wanted a bus. See you at the bottom of the ski hill tomorrow, sucker. If you had to pick an argument, what did you pick him for? Do you know who he is? Only the top pro circuit skier in the U.S.?
see what they want to do. Three minutes, three minutes. All conditions are asked to be at the starting line as soon as possible. I've never been in a hot pub before, okay? I just... What? Jesus, that's the guy I've been telling you about. Oh, God, he's followed us this far. He looks kind of cute to me. Hey, listen, honey. Uh, I want you to do me a real big favor. All right, Stryker. It's the start of the race and he's not here. No, he's probably drunk somewhere. He's not going to show up. Doesn't matter if he is. We're not going to win this race. It's a real pro, you know. Well, well, we'll lose our bus. Not necessarily. We may not win this race, but uh, maybe we can make sure Andy Mackin and his team don't win either. Get the drift? Well, I'll be damned. The little greenhorn finally got them bums corralled after all. <clears throat> Excuse me, boy. I wonder if you could show me how these things work. Uh, um. Yeah, sure. <laughs> now, I'm not up in cross-country uh, buying these. See, these are cross-country skates. I think what you do is you... What? Hey, 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 gotcha. What? <gasps> what the hell are you doing? You idiot! Take these goddamn things off! No! Nope. Look, uh, I got a race. Stop playing cops and robber, Buster. Undo them right now! I'm gonna get a promotion for this. Gonna get a promotion for what? Uncle Jack's gonna give me a promotion when he gets the bus back. Bet the bus against $5,000 that me and my penguins would beat another team across the finish line in today's race. You bet the bus. You got it, Inspector Clouseau. Why? Uh, this ugly big guy started beating me up for no reason last night, pushing me and my friends around because we were foreigners or something. Only way I could get us out of there was by challenging him and his friends to a race. Today's top to bottom. Don't let them fellas sweet talk you now. SD, can I buy you a drink? Now, it's going to be hard enough for us to win that race, but if I don't enter the race, we'll lose the bus for sure, so let me go, Buster! But you can... Hey, asshole. Oh. About time somebody locked you up. You do this? Good gonna make the race that much easier, Mr. Big Mouth. Sure am looking forward to driving our new bus, jerk. Uh, don't you insult my brother-in-law. And we're there. not gonna lose the bus, not if I can help it. Woo-wee! Go get that drink, honey. Good man, but Philip, the, uh... Oh, okay. Here you go. Look. You know, I'm beginning to see you in a new light, Philip.
racers regret that we are unable to continue this race because certain scenes containing fast skiing, bad language, and extensive nudity are offensive to the people of Canada. We can say, however, that Belinda finished 83rd and returned home with Uncle S.D. and after a long bout with drug abuse, is living a quiet life slaughtering pigs at a hot dog factory. Pork Chop, our fat friend, also returned home. After spending 10 days in Sun Valley, Porky underwent extensive surgery to correct facial damage following a bad accident involving a large European woman with a wild imagination. Joey finished second in the race. However, he was disqualified when officials discovered he had squeezed his pimples with an addictive antibiotic cream only three hours before the race. Stryker was also disqualified. As he approached the finish gate, he took his clothes off, lit himself on fire, and began chanting, Oh God, let go of my ears. I know my job. Race officials ruled that assistance from God in a ski race is considered an unfair advantage. Today, Stryker remains a powderhead, living in seclusion in somewhere else, Idaho.